Thanks, Paul, and uh, thanks everyone for your interest today. So we'll just go to the first slide. Um, just as an overview of the rebuild we've been going through in Verus over the last couple of years, you can see the movement in price, and as Paul talked about, a market capitalisation just below 40 million at the moment, and cash on on uh, available cash at the moment of 17.3 million, which has been a big movement for us over the last couple of years and where we started from. So we'll go to the next slide. So those who are new to the story, Verus is uh, started as a roll-up of a whole series of surveying businesses to build a national practice. We're now taking that platform and broadening it out, using a lot more from our spatial data and working with a group of clients. We still operate across the engineering, the property and the planning sectors and growing and diversifying our digital and spatial business across a series of core industries. One of the big areas for us has been our acquisition about 18, 18 months or so ago of 49% interest in Woomera Group, who are an Indigenous-owned business and have been growing a, a profitable group uh, joining in with Verus. It's been a great opportunity for us to have a, a meaningful input into Indigenous participation in our industry and also been a great commercial model for both of us to grow our businesses into a range of sectors. So if we go to the next slide. One of the things that differentiates us from our more traditional competitors has been that we work with a real core of uh, large blue chip clients. This has been a focus for us in terms of building into these bigger clients, focusing on core sectors and the bigger, more complex work and getting out of some of the smaller day-to-day -day work that some of our smaller competitors have been operating in. This sector of our business continues to grow and our core clients, the 14 key clients, are now over 40% of our revenue and that's a strengthening part of our business and one of our strategic priorities over the last couple of years. So go to the next slide. We released yesterday uh, an update on our uh, unaudited FY23 numbers and the key part about this is we've been able to return the business to profitability. You can see the movement both significant ongoing revenue growth despite some of the challenges through those couple of COVID years. This has been the first year we've had a clear run at the business, understanding how the business truly operates in a normal environment. And to be able to return it to profitability in an underlying sense has been a big achievement and a big movement for the business. Equally moving from the position back in FY20 where we had Significant debts to move to a point of this net cash now of 17.3 million is a big shift and we've been able to use that to leverage our strategy and take the business forward. We continue to focus on cost control, making the base of aim business pay its way and continue to grow. The focus in the second half, though, really became a challenge around uh, margin improvement and not really chasing revenue. So albeit the revenue slightly dropped a bit, relative to the first half, we saw that as being a real positive where we weren't chasing low margin revenue just to chase revenue, which had been the historical practice of the business, but using the people we've got to focus on growing margin and also to focus on executing on our strategy. We've continued to invest inside the business to build that differentiation, as I'll talk about in a minute, around our digital strategy. We'll go to the next slide. One of these areas has been we've taken the business that was a whole series of a survey business and turned around and said, we need to be so much more of that. If we stay just as a surveying business, we really won't deliver the returns and the growth that we or the market would expect. So we're focused on development and investment in our people to build off that into our strategic growth. We see that that growth is making so much more of the surveying business, growing that up into our digital strategy. And we've shown good progress in that in over the last 12 months or so and continue to accelerate that investment and that pivot from where the business might have been traditionally into where the business needs to be to be a sustainable and growing business over the next couple of years. We have continued to invest in improving on our delivery executing on things with our clients and a higher degree of repeat work. And those things are starting to deliver benefit for us. Uh, and we've seen that return as we return the business to profitability. So we'll go to the next slide. 
One of the core cool parts for us has been to continue to invest in the best technology, to be at the front of the industry and to be in a position that we can crowd out our other competitors. The technology and the, the national presence we've got lets us move that technology around the country, really sweat those assets, get maximum utilisation and be in a position where we're able to integrate these 3D capabilities into data collection that we can then take up into our digital strategy. So we'll go to the next slide. Traditionally, our industry has been all about just collecting data and where we've moved it over the last 18 months or so, our part of the business is into doing so much more with that data, both in analytics, applying AI, building that into subscription-based revenue for our business, but really focusing on the value we get from that data. We've developed a number of digital solutions that we're taking to market and we've already started commercialising with clients. We're doing that with a range of our existing services into that core group of um, clients I've talked about. 3D visualisation, sensor data, uh, extending that into AI analytics to drive more data and more value from our data for our clients and getting repeat work off that basis. We're in a pretty unique position where, the, where they're really the only ones both collecting that data, holding that data, and then providing analytics off the base of that data and extending that out. That is our value proposition. And we've been able to come at that in the same transition as returning the base business to profitability in parallel. And we understand that that has been one of the core credibility gaps we've had to fill over the last couple of years. And we're pleased to have made that progress. To the next slide. One of the areas we put a lot of focus in over the last couple of years has been in capital management, moving from that significant net debt position we had to be in a position where we have cash at hand, using that operationally over the last uh, year to save us money and gain efficiency, both in things like vehicles and equipment procurement, some of the just the standard base operating models for the business. We've been able to deliver significant shareholder value by leveraging that cash. We retain a significant franking credits, significant unutilised tax losses from the past. The, the new team is now able to bring in and deliver benefits for our shareholders. One of the things we've started being able to be way more active in over the last six months is it assessing and executing on M&A opportunities. We understand that we can only get a few goes of this and we've been far more selective in the past and looking for opportunities that will really let us leverage our strategy and take those next steps going forward. And we'll be seeing progress on that over the next year. Go to the next slide. We've reported consistently over the last three years in both our backlog and our unsecured pipeline. We've built a track record of showing how that unsecured pipeline turns into backlog and turns into revenue. And despite some of the economic challenges over the last six months, We've been able to demonstrate that both our backlog and our targeted pipeline has stayed strong and continues to convert into revenue. And the focus over the next year is to continue to strengthen the margins that we get from that revenue and seeing that progress. Next slide. We operate over these six core sectors. We continue to see strength in sectors like infrastructure, defense, and government continue good spending. We see growth in the energy sector and continued stable opportunities for us in the mining and resources sector. And the sectors that we're, the areas that we're focused in in the property sector remain strong with the growth in um, uh, population growth in the country. We see that we continue to be focused in the right areas in the property sector and have confidence there. And the final slide, please. So we're really pleased with the continued progress we've made on our strategy. We've returned the business to profitability. We saw that as the first key step and continue to grow that on the basis of margin. We see our focus now is accelerating the execution of that strategy, investing more in the digital strategy and pivoting the business out of the areas we don't want to be in. Our capital management has given us the strength to do that. And we feel that we've demonstrated a strong underlying outlook for our markets and our sectors and showing the track record to deliver on those areas into profitability. Thanks, Paul. That's all from me. Thanks, Michael. Got a few questions for you here. The first one from myself. Uh, 
I noticed that your cash balance, since you were last on, your cash balance hasn't changed much uh, yeah. since you're on five months ago. Why is this? And, and do you plan to make any investments in the foreseeable future? Look, it's been a focus for us to make sure we didn't whittle into that cash balance to demonstrate to everyone that we're holding that both for the benefits it gives the business, but also to put us into that strategic M&A space. We've been really careful also to say that in the past we've acquired to acquire and we're not going to do that. We're going to pick up things that give us a strategic benefit, particularly in that digital space and fill in geographic gaps. And we're making good progress in that area. Um, so it was important to demonstrate that we're not going to use that cash to pay for loss making business and take that further. And I think it's uh, allowed us to make good progress over the last little while and at the same time grow the business, Paul. Thanks, uh, Michael. And the question here, what share of revenues comes from the uh, digital spatial data services and where do you see this growing to uh, and over what time frame? We've been pretty clear over the last couple of years that we, we see that the two larger parts of the business historically have been our property and our uh, engineering sectors. And both of them have been traditionally about 40% of our revenue. And our digital business started at about 5% when I started. So we're, we're saying that we see that those three components of the business should be equisized over the next number of years. And by doing that, we bring in that additional margin from the digital business to supplement the core of the business. So we see that we're well on that trajectory. We'll be in excess of 15% for the business this year, which considering that the challenges over the last couple of years and the hole we've been digging out of, we see is good progress. Um, and we also see that with the, the, the opportunities we've created, we can see that accelerating over the next two or three years. And uh, who's your largest customer and what percentage of revenue do they deliver for you? Look, our largest customers would be people like John Holland and Defence, CPB, these sorts of big cu customers. They would be, you know, 2 to 4% of our revenue individually. So albeit we've got a real focus on those key clients that we have and they deliver about 40% of our revenue, we've got no one customer that is a make or break opportunity for us. And that's also been part of our focus across geographies and across sector to be able to use that to leverage growth in areas. So we've got the government sector, we've got our private sector, we've got defence, we can see growth across all of those sectors. And we're not relying on, you know, just one area. And we're, for example, being in some of the challenged property areas that we're not in anymore. Gotcha. And uh, one last one here. Are there, any, are there any key capabilities in the digital uh, spatial data offering that you might look to add or to expand or strengthen? Look, I can see that um, the more that we can bring some unique offerings around AI, visualisation, uh, some of the speed we can bring to market, um, that's a real opportunity. We're doing that partially through our own internal development. We're also leveraging some global relationships to do that um, more broadly. And that, that's a big opportunity for us. So the more that we can bring in digital smarts that accelerate that strategy growth, um, that would be the priority. And just one last one here. You, uh, someone asking, you, you recently did a share buyback. Uh, why did you do that in lieu of maybe paying a, a, a dividend? We, look, we've seen that um, we can make more money for shareholders by being really selective in that buyback. We, we really haven't spent a lot of money. We've done it to where there's been, you know, poor value in our shares. We've protected that for shareholders. We see that through growth in capital growth in the share price, ongoing profitability, if we invest that money effectively, which we are doing and will do, there's a far greater return than a short-term sugar hit. If we took a short-term sugar hit for shareholders, we'd be back where this business was four years ago before I started with debts and not making money and not being able to grow. And we, we can't return to that place, Paul. Michael, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on and uh, wish you a great weekend. Thank you. Appreciate your time.